G'day, welcome back to episode 96 and our journey through northern Albania. In the last episode, we hiked to some hot springs, tackled the muddy mountains, tasted some local food and checked out a fort. In this episode, we leave the coast heading north and explore the region around Theth. That's one of the benefits to technology these days. It makes life so much easier. We, our, our new friend is Shepard, stuck around for about 45 minutes. And um, thanks to Google Translate, we could have a bit of a conversation with him, gave him a coffee and some biscuits. And he's 63 years old, has three kids, two boys and a, and a daughter. He's um, just moving his 50 head of sheep, which he does every day. Lovely old bloke. He was telling us is this building here, the one that's um, fallen down, it used to be a military, some sort of military building. There's also, I think, three or well, two um, sort of uh, heavy artillery placements just down the hill here. And there's another one up here, which I'm guessing were from you know, the kind of communist era. I went for a walk last night. The ones down here are now used as a sort of stable. There's about 100 head of um, goats in them, uh, which they moved up this morning. And obviously this one's fallen down. but. Beautiful morning this morning. It got a bit windy um, just as the sun was coming up, but now it's it's still fresh, but beautiful clear skies. The first day we've seen like this in in weeks. It's great. Still a bit too cold, I think, to get in the water, but we'll go check out the beaches um, once we've had some breakfast. Same problem again with the back. This time it started to screech a bit, so we came into a workshop here. These guys specialise in four wheel drive, so glad that um, I have land to help us out with this one. Um, and it actually had scored the, the disc as well, so they, they shot off and got that machine. Thankfully, it carries spares again, so we're just, they're just popping those in now. And we're not going to make it to where we wanted to today, unfortunately, but we'll head up towards the valley and see if we can find somewhere to stay. But, yeah, this, this backside, I don't know whether there's something wrong with it. Check the pistons um, and stuff, and it all seems to be okay. So I'm not sure why exactly that one's going first. This side wasn't nearly as bad. It's still worn down a bit. Nowhere near to the extent of this one. So I'm looking forward when we get home. We're going to give the brakes a complete overhaul and and um, try and just find the source of why this is, continues to happen on this side. Mm. I think you're just going to give the troopy a... Big overhaul. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stuff. There's an ever-growing list, but not too long. Only a couple, another couple of months. So. It always blows me away every time we've come to the mechanic to either ask if we can use their workshop or just get them to do some work for us. Yeah. Without question. They'll just drop everything they're doing and just give you a hand. It's just, it's just such a nice luxury that we don't. I mean, it just is unheard of in kind of Western society. If you went to a workshop at home and tried to do that, they'd say, "Yeah, no worries, come back next week." But, <laughs> so good, like hour and we're done. It's not like they weren't had, didn't have work. They had a, like three other cars in the shop. They just, yeah, no worries, we'll do it for you now. So very accommodating. Very accommodating. It's nice guys, and those guys knew what they were doing too. They, I think they're called Japan parts. They got it done quickly, and they definitely were confident in what they were doing. It's always good for peace of mind.
So we didn't get very far. We drove about 10 kilometers out of Skoda. Followed some tracks down to the lake that we just camped next to. There's a heap of horses here. And the guy who owns the horses, he um, he actually just popped by to give them their evening meal and he said it was okay for us to camp here, so that was good. Yeah. Yeah. So now... Nice horses. Yeah, they're really pretty. This is... Um, it's, uh, I had a look on Google when that's how we found this spot and it looks like this comes up in the... must be in the melt or something, where this area is in front of us. All in the water. There's all the fishing boats here as well, so I'm guessing they use them to go out through this weed here and... Hmm. When there's more water here. There's actually another shepherd just over here. He's got a herd of herd of sheep. <laughs> On the other side of this lake, it's actually Montenegro. So there you go. day here which is great we actually set the alarm for a little bit early this morning so that we could head off and make the most of the nice weather before the rain is forecast to come in again tomorrow and so we're heading up into the mountains to a village called Theth and when we get there we should get there around lunchtime and we're gonna do a hike which goes to a waterfall and there's another uh, another blue hole so um, are we for a swim this time Doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Last night when we were having dinner, some local fishermen came down, put their waders on, and they just went through this little stream out here past the reeds. And they had these big, probably like eight foot trident sort of looking spears, like with five tips on it, and, and flashlights. And they, he was saying that they go out past the reeds and they just in the shallows there, they just stun the fish with the lights and spear them. Unfortunately, they didn't get anything last night, but. It's a full moon tonight, so. Yeah. Because it was so bright last night, they think that this... I want to scare the yeah. fish away a bit, but... You've probably seen these drone shots I got this morning that there's a network of fences that run along the, through the there. reeds here, and I can only assume that when the water, when the lake is in flood, or higher after the winter, that um, they might be used for, like, fish nets or something. They come in here and then trap the fish. And, hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty extensive network, but beautiful area. Anyway, we should get going. Yeah, I want to get going and Enjoy get the up day. there and have a nice afternoon. Yeah.
driving to Theft has been absolutely amazing. It was such a beautiful valley to drive up. And the last, what do you reckon, like 10 Ks? Was, yeah, about that. Uh, was a, unsealed. Unsealed and yeah, yeah, it was good fun. Jolly drove it. Yep. Like a boss. Like a we boss. drove to the furthest <laughs> point we could, the, the, um, the, over here. That way? You can see the, it narrows into a, the canyon there, so this is, this is the end of the road. Yeah, we actually is, got to drive a little bit further than what we thought we could, so... Yeah, the actual, I think the actual hiking track starts a kilometre back that way, or yeah. every kilometre, so we've knocked a kilometre off, so... It's good. <laughs> sure, you could probably call it lazy, but... You know. <laughs> no, I'm not complaining because my toe is still a little bit sore, so yeah, we've got about a kilometre walk to see the waterfall in the blue eye. And yeah. Trippy loves to stretch his legs anyway. <laughs> but yeah, it's a nice walk, I think, up there. back to the car now and we're gonna go uh, and camp at a field that we drove past um, just uh, like a couple of kilometers back up the truck and yeah you're warmed up now after you swim yeah, that was the coldest water I think I've ever been in I could feel my skin like <laughs> burning I tried to like breathe through it but you didn't stay in very long <laughs> it wasn't happening it was it was unbelievable <laughs> but um yeah it's crazy this just behind this tree here, there's a, like a, a homestead a substantial one too but it's kind of like Nepal where they're just the only way in is through this, that narrow canyon there and along this walking path and they've then built this big homestead. It's, it's just crazy. Like in the winters there again, like as I said the other day, it's just, that's it. They're done. They're there for the months. Oh, I suppose they can walk into this one or with their donkeys, but definitely no road traffic ever. It's kind of, um, I think it'd be kind of nice to do a, just spend a bit of time, just get <laughs> of contact with everything and everyone for a little bit. Reset. It does sound kind of nice. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna walk back now. We hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed this beautiful part of Albania. If you'd like to watch more unreleased episodes right now, head over to our Patreon page through the link in the description. Feel free to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to catch the next one where we finish our time in Albania and head north. Thanks for watching. See ya!